There is no better. According to who? Who who has the rule book on better and best? Right. Is there a rule book? Because art, last time I checked, is subjective. Yeah. What you like, somebody else might not. Yes. So you don't get to... You just make your art and you put it out there. It's to give. It's not to get. Yes. If your intention is to get, I think it's slightly skewed, don't you think? What's up, everybody? My name is Brazil, and welcome to my podcast. Today, we have a very special guest with a really beautiful energy. He is a world-renowned choreographer, creative director, and just artist. Beautiful person, Mr. Tice Diorio. Thanks for that intro. <laughs> Man, you need to stop screaming in my house. The neighbors are calling, saying that you are too loud. Not even. <laughs> when did you start meditating? Um, probably, oh man, so long ago. Um, what, you'd like to say something? Would you? He's into it. He's like, yeah, I want to know too. I know. I want to know about the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, man, like, maybe like, I think I always kind of did. Cause. Like since you were a kid? No, like. I, I think as a kid, you know, I liked like going on walks and that's a form of meditation too. If you're in nature to me, it's like, and I remember like being in New York city cause I grew up in New York. I, you know, I come from Brooklyn and so like I'd be in Manhattan and I would walk along the streets from like lower Manhattan, like in like Soho, the West village, all the way up to like, a hundredth street wow in like amsterdam club but new york is a very chaotic kind of environment yeah but for me i you know i would to new york city is that's like home to me so like i existed well in that chaos yeah but when i would walk along the streets i would love to just walk from literally like soho west village all the way up to like a hundred and second street in columbus like yeah or like Amsterdam, Broadway. And technically you don't need to be somewhere quiet to meditate. I think no. that's part of the misconception. I, it's yes. probably even better that you were meditating in New York in, City. In the insanity. Yes, it's great. Cause you know, I, 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 I didn't realize it at the time, but I something about that I loved and it was therapeutic and it was really meditative. And I could, and honestly, like just spending that time walking up and down, taking in people, taking in the city, the, the frequency of the city, me, I would get all my, the answers I needed. It was something I just did. It was like a ritual. I would always do it. It was, it, you know, cause I went to school in Manhattan. I went to school at, uh, in Lincoln center, the high school of performing arts. Yeah. Famed high school of performing arts. And so, so for me, yeah, meditation. And then it just got a little bit more like it changed, you know, when I got to LA, I was very into like a lot of spirituality and read lots of books and things. And then, and I would also go to Venice when I was in LA, I'd go to Venice and walk the boardwalk and spend time at the beach, like on the weekends. It was like, it was so, it was like, to me, that was meditation. I like, I love nature, you know, and as a kid, I, you know, my grandparents had a house upstate New York, up in like Hunter Mountain, and I would love like the quietness of everything. So the stillness, you know, if you, if you, I think if you like stillness and, and your, your breath, if you can be one with your breath and the stillness and the quietness, that's meditation, you know, so. There's a lot of misconceived notions as to what meditation is, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, uh, I've always known about it. I feel like I've had moments where I've like done practical meditation, like you said, like in your case, walking in my case must have been rollerblading or things like that. I think whenever I'm just present in the moment yeah. and really here observing and feeling the, the isness that mm -hmm. it is and not judging it, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why I really like doing activities that put me present. Uh, last year we started playing tennis 
and that, that's very active. But when I'm in it, like when, you know, she's taking lessons and I'm just kind of naturally good, but my form sucks. But when we have a good rally back and forth, that feels like a meditation. Yeah. It's like, no, we're here. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is all that matters. I am so I am one with the ball. And yeah, yeah, yeah. we just started taking surf lessons as well. We bought our first surfboard and wetsuits and Ooh. going out there with the ocean. That also is something that makes me feel present, you know? Mm. And I think that there's so much of our culture right now that's beautiful that we have access to with technology, but also it's robbing our focus. Mm -hmm. There is a big deficit of intentional focus, at least in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like in the greater behaviors here in America, you know, mm -hmm. because we can look anything online, right? You can learn whatever. But I think that just because you have the whole menu there doesn't mean you need to scroll through the entire right, menu. Right. Totally. Right? Because I, I know for me, I can make an excuse and say, well, oh, well, this is for work. Or I could mm -hmm. use this for something else. And, and there's a difference between when I'm intentionally watching something or when I just have it on to avoid hearing my thoughts. And then I'm like, oh, then I'm using mm -hmm. it as escapism, not mm -hmm. to even connect with art mm -hmm. or whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. um, right before we started talking today, I was mentioning, because you're asking me how I was doing, that right now I feel a lot better and I was feeling very overwhelmed before. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because overwhelm kind of has nothing to do with the outside world. I mean, the outside world can influence it, mm -hmm. but I was overwhelmed when I was unsuccessful and wasn't making good money. And then I started becoming more successful and making more money. And then I was still overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, ah, <laughs> it's me, you know? And, and, and we hear these things, we see these Instagram quotes and mm -hmm. see it in the books. And it's one thing to know it in theory, the other thing to experience it, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm at a point in my journey where I'm finally, because creatively, I've always been able to, to do my art. Mm -hmm. I never had a problem getting to do my art, mm -hmm. but I always had a problem financially sustaining myself from it. You know, I, mean, I never had to get a real job, but it would be like, you know, like I could have gotten a job at HBO, but I didn't want to. I don't want to just be an editor at some company. I wanted mm -hmm. to create my thing. So there were some months where I made a lot of money, some months where I made no money, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and now it's like I'm consistently getting material things that I've always wanted. And it's not that they're bad, but they don't change how I feel at all, mm -mm. you know? And then the weird part is that then like bitter, bigger and better things would come that, like I used to dream of having like a red camera, mm -hmm. right? Like as a, as a young videographer, you know, we used to always film with our DSLRs. And then on some music videos, we can rent the big cinema camera for this one production. Mm -hmm. And I was like, one day I'm going to own one. And, you know, now I own it and like three other cameras. And then, then I still feel overwhelmed and not creative some days. And I'm like, ah. Oh. You just have to like check in. That's all. <laughs> you probably just have to check in and think like every now and then I'll just be like, <laughs> yeah, it'll just come to me like naturally. I'll just be like, if I land at, at you know, in LA, I'll be like, wow, what a blessing. I was able to go and do something that I love to do. I was able to like make some art, create how I like to create with people that are on the same page and I get to come home and I go home to my home. How, how amazing, how amazing is that? <laughs> so I, I don't like not recognize it. It's, it, it really is, it sounds cliche, but it's like, if you can recognize the small things, I think that's a, a, I think it's a special gift. <laughs> me too. Be, to me, a very attractive quality is somebody who's grateful, mm -hmm. right? Like if you imagine somebody like even like at a gathering, a typical even like industry gathering, like everybody's just trying to be all cool or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And you got one person who just sees a cool leaf on the ground. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is the coolest looking leaf I've ever seen. And, the, and they could get everybody's attention just by mm -hmm. how passionate mm -hmm. they are about the beauty there. And it's oh, yeah. like... It's, it's your ability to see the greatness in the world mm. is the richness, Yeah. right? Yeah. It's not, because there's a never ending amount of things that can be mm. attained, right? Yeah. You, you, technically you can never have enough if, you, right. if you're going for the outside stuff, mm -hmm. right? But it's one I can bring that sense of, and it's an act, mm -hmm. you know? Like you said that when you land, you, mm -hmm. you, you have a feel of gratitude. You just feel like, it, and it's not like I try. It was like the other day I landed in LA and I was like, ah, oh, I was like, wow, I'm back in LA. I'm going home. And I just came from someplace great. Yes. And I'm able to do, 
Oh my mm. god, this oh, is the Razzie. best. Oh my god, this is the best. <laughs> Good boy, you're man. the best distraction ever. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, you're so amazing. I love you. <laughs> Good boy, Brazzy. Okay. That was really awesome. That was like perfection. Great timing. That right? was really, really good because I love dogs. <laughs> yes, buddy. <laughs> you know, that was kind of a, 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 you know, dogs are so smart. Yes. <laughs> and your dog connected to my energy, apparently. Yeah. He's he's very intuitive oh, like that. He knows yes. the right time to come in yes. for a hug. Yes. Yes. It's a great. This is going to be a very special part of this podcast. That's a beautiful thing about dogs, yeah. right? Like they find so much oh, excitement oh with God. anything. You give them an old dirty sock that they want to. Yes, yeah, I know. I know. Yes, I, know. I understand. Yes. yes, I do. Good it's boy. really a good thing. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, Are you kidding? Yes. Are you kidding? Yes. Like, that's like perfection right there. <laughs> yes. That's perfection right there. Like, yes. I know. I won't talk to you. I won't. <laughs> Did you have a formal moment where you said, I'm going to learn how to meditate? I, I just became a lot more curious about it. Yeah. But well, I think. Yeah. If you were kind of living it already for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like my journey, like, uh, you know, I was probably about 15 or 16. And true story, no lie. I would cut pictures out of, of things that inspired me. And I would tape them along my wall in my bedroom. Visualizing. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was absolutely creating the 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 vision board for my life at 15 or 16. What was on that vision board? Um well, I was in New York, so I grew up dancing in New York and like there was a lot of theater available to me cuz like Broadway was right there in, right. in New York City. So, you know, obviously I was connected to television and that medium and movies and all things dance. Anything that had to do with dance, I was very curious. I was at a very young age extremely interested in when I saw something if I had if I had a program from a show I looked through that program I looked at everyone's name in that program yeah there was there tru truly there was not one name in there that I wasn't curious about who they were which one they were on stage how and how I could find out who they were and the music that was playing and the choreography and the direction and who the producers were on record albums, I wanted to know. I read every single word that was on these albums. I wanted to know when, how, who, where, what, and why. So you were sure as a teenager sure, that I your was, career was going to be in professional art? I didn't know. I knew. Oh, yeah, for sure. I knew yeah. I was going to be doing something. Yeah. Like on some level, but. Was your family supportive? Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. That's great. Not many artists have that. I was really lucky to have that, yeah. So, so I was very vision. I was very curious about the 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 what and the why and the how and the who. Like in um I would go see I remember going to see like the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater mm -hmm. and literally like it's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life, in my whole life. I yeah. was like, what is this? This is unbelievable. And so, you know, and one of the greatest dancers that ever walked planet Earth. Desmond Richardson, you know, so I mean, when I saw him, we went, went, we went to the same high school, and he was a senior, and I remember seeing him dance and thinking I didn't even understand, couldn't even comprehend what that was at that level. Yeah, like one of the twentieth century greatest modern contemporary dancers that ever walked planet Earth. True story. So it was like that changed my perspective on what I knew was or what I had seen up until that point. And then that shifted me off of where I was and then elevated me to another level of curiosity and how I could attain that. But I was a, um, a like a sophomore in high school and he was a senior. And so, and- Oh, you guys were in the same school? Yeah. Oh, so you were seeing, was everybody at that school like, yeah, he's gonna be the one? Who? Talking about Desmond? Desmond, he or what well, he was, he was already the one. Oh, he was already on Alvin Ailey while was, in high school. Well, no, he was in high school, and I think he probably joined 
the company at shortly after. But it was apparent that it's kind of like when you see like a basketball player, and you're like, okay, this this person's going to the it was, league. It was like, yeah. extremely apparent. Yeah, it was extremely apparent. What do you and, think makes the difference? Mm-hmm. Like in his case, let's talk about Desmond, because I haven't seen a ton of his work, but I hear so many praises about him. You felt it. What was it? It was another level of excellence. It was just a, a commitment to the art. It was, a, but you know, at that school, it's the high school of performing arts, LaGuardia. Right. It was the high school in the movie Fame. Right. Debbie Allen. Right. That set everything up. You know what I mean? So I had to audition to get into that school, and they p- pick only a select few. And one of the teachers there believed and saw me, and. Um, and uh, I got accepted into the school. And that's what started my formal training. So we were studying, you know, all morning is, is your art form. So you had acting, there was, uh, there were acting uh, students, there were musicians, there were singers, there were dancers. And so I was in the dance department and um, you were studying modern dance, studying Martha Graham technique. And then you were studying ballet with the, like, the top faculty. It's the, one of the best schools in the world for, for that's amazing. The arts that must have been such an education. I mean, creatively. I mean, there are many people that came from that school that are doing incredible things. I believe Timothy Chalamet. Oh wow! Yeah, he's was like in the school and already acting at a high level getting nominated for an Oscar. So. Did you ever want to do music and acting or did you know dancing was your... No, dancing was the thing at that point because I needed the formal training. Mm. And so I needed to study. I needed to study ballet and modern and put that foundation underneath to give it the, the solid, you know, yeah, like, like the anchor, the roots to the tree. Yes. So that the tree doesn't blow over in the storm. Do you know what I mean? Right. So I needed the roots. I needed the anchor. I needed the foundation that would sustain me for the rest of my career. Yes, because you can be creative on top of that. But that foundation well, gives that, you things to draw that, from. That gives you the ability to do anything. It gives you the ability to do anything. So if you're going to go into commercial dance, and I, you know, my hope was to um, be well-versed in everything. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I... Uh, you know, I wanted to do Broadway and then, but somehow I got to that later. I ended up coming to LA and, um, and getting scooped up by Paula Abdul right when she was putting out albums and at the top of the charts. And so I, I had a private audition with her and, um, the dance for her tour to dance for her. And she, it happened. I, I stepped foot, I landed in LA and, um, Julie McDonald set up a private audition for me and Paula. And Shout out to Julie. There it is. That's beautiful. Yeah, was I, that your first professional gig you booked? No, I I was in New York before all of this, and I I was uh, you know I auditioned for commercials. Um, I did a Teddy Graham's commercial, the Nabisco snacks. Did you ever have to do like regular jobs? Well, no. So, so from so, just like understand the timeline. So, you went to that performing arts high school. Mm-hmm. Once you graduated, what happened? Let's go chronologically. Well, I just um, you were just I was leaving school to go audition for projects. And you were getting booked. I was getting booked. Yeah, I. I, I so it became a real thing because yeah. some artists it takes a while for them to become professional artists. Mm-hmm. You were straight out of that school already, like yeah. working, and then you just moved to LA to work on. More significant projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very lucky to and fortunate to like get, you know, in New York City at the time. I had auditioned for some, and was uh, came in contact with some incredible dancers and performers like um, Marianne Lamb, one of the greatest dancers of all time. Um, uh, Wayne Salento, a choreographer who was a Bob Fosse dancer. Wow. Then became a a world-renowned choreographer, choreographed many, many shows on Broadway, um, and then Wicked. Wow. And so he was was someone who recognized me, saw me, hired me, and um, that was great. And he was such a, he was a a great figure in dance, you know? And so, and I met him when I was 16. 
And so, and then, uh, you know, I, I had just met so many great people that had done some iconic things and it was really cool. It's nice to, <clears throat> to connect with people on that creative frequency. Mm, yeah. You know, my parents, they were both ballet dancers and choreographers. So I just grew up around it. And to me, it took a while for me to understand that not everybody grew up that way. Mm. It just felt normal. Like, of course, your parents do art and everybody around you. It, 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 like, yeah. it just, I was so in it mm. that now, you know, I've gotten a chance to be a little older and I can say, oh, wow, I can appreciate just how special that was mm. to spend a lot of my childhood around other people in pursuit of artistic excellence, mm -hmm. have that be a peer group, you know? Um, I can imagine, you know, in, in your position as well, right? Because it, it's, it's like there's a frequency that you tap into. Like we all have unique personalities, but the people that are really creative, there's just something, there just is. Can't explain it. They're it, just, they're yeah, like this vessel yeah. that's just. I also think that there's no one way yeah. of doing anything. Right. There's no one way to path to whatever you want to call it. Especially creatively. Yeah, it's like everyone has a different journey, a different path, a different way of doing things, and it's all valid. Did your path go according to your plan? I would think so. Yeah? Yeah. How, what, like, what was it? It was like, okay, cool, I'm going to go tour for artists and then eventually choreograph. Like, you had that in your mind going into it? No, I had no, 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 um, no desire to choreograph. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. That's so interesting because... Yeah. I think people from the outside don't understand that there's a difference between yeah. somebody who wants to dance and choreograph. Yeah, with me, um, okay, going back to your question about what was on my vision board, um, at the time, like when I was 17, 17, there was a show on Broadway called Jerome Robbins Broadway. And Jerome Robbins, you know, he, he did West Side Story, which is one of the greatest wow. works of all time. It's timeless. It could come back in a few lifetimes and it's still good. Yeah. They've just remade it. Yeah. You know, so it says something about the work. Yes. They were, why did they bring it back? Because it's that good. It's a powerful story. It's that good, you know. And he was one of the greatest storytellers in dance of all time. Greatest, one of the greatest storytellers in dance. So for me, I went to see this show and they had a cast of like 60 some odd dancers, singer, actors, and I literally... The feeling I had in the audience was unlike anything I've ever experienced in my whole life, even to this day. And people like Marianne Lamb were in this show, um, Charlotte D'Amboise, um, Scott Fowler, the greatest dancers you'd ever seen. And well, of course they would be because Jerome Robbins selected them and, and it, it was so incredible. It was like it literally, literally brought you to tears. To you. just, you just couldn't even. There were no words. It was the greatest dance I've ever seen on stage, and that like shifted me. And I, I don't know why I just, I wanted to be in that show so bad, but I was too young. Obviously, what was the name of the show? Jerome Robbins Broadway. Oh, this. Oh, this. It was. Oh, it was. It the was, musical was called that. Got it. It was an evening of all of his works. He oh. had created The King and I. He had created the choreography for Peter Pan. He had the, created Fiddler on the Roof. He had created West Side Story. He oh, created, so he did the choreography for those. So this night, these, put them together. Put them together in an evening. Oh, show. like a greatest hits almost, but movement Jerome wise. Jerome Robbins Broadway. And it oh. starred um, Jason Alexander from Seinfeld as the narrator. And um, he was fused in throughout the entire show. And it was incredible. Like he understood st like real storytelling through movement. Yeah. Real storytelling. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the, in the, in the dictionary, there it is, you know? And so that was really inspiring to me. And I was like, I just want to do that. And so I was too young to be in that. I had auditioned. What a great experience to be in the room with incredible people such as, you know, and then, um, but I think, Cut to many years later, I went to see the show. I'd bought tickets maybe 15 times. Wow. I went to see it over and over and over and over and over. But at the time, I didn't know what was subconsciously in here. Yeah. Cut to later, I get this opportunity. I had danced professionally, 
till I was 35, 36. I had done a lot of work, great, great projects, you know, and then um, So You Think You Can Dance came along and then I jumped in. Yeah. But I didn't set out to be a choreographer. Oh, so when you went to So You Think. I, that wasn't my, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't, I just jumped in and as any dancer would, you just do the project and do it to the best of your ability and you work really hard and you know and so but subconsciously I was thinking cut to like after I had be like started developing my skills as a choreographer on the show working every week to try to find my voice as a choreographer what do I have to say Right. It's one thing to know how to move. It's another thing to channel the voice. There, you know, as a choreographer, I'm not trying to show you my steps. Yes, the steps are my steps. Right. But I thought, what am I saying? What am I saying? Who am I? What is my voice? What do I have to say through these steps? You know what I'm saying? So, so because I had learned, you know, from seeing the greats, Jerome Robbins, Alvin Ailey, Martha Graham, you know, the pioneers, the people who paved the way, you know, and on many lists, a, a list of many others, you know, Twyla Tharp, um, so many I can go on forever, but like, um, like, what are you saying through these steps? What does this mean? What am I supposed to understand after I see these steps? How do you convey the message? The steps... It's not about the step, ever. Step is a, is a, is a, the, is a tool. The, it's the tool. But what is being conveyed? And you know, art is subjective. You can look at it however. Yes, I've seen many creations that are just steps. And you know, I, you know the art is, can be born of anything. It can be about nothing. <laughs> and that's valid too. Yeah. You know, so, but you were asking yourself about what your message was. Yeah. So I was just like trying to like... You know, through process, through you know, in the process. You know what I mean. You you have to, you have to be in the process. That's a really beautiful, mm. pivotal point because it's so interesting, right? Because as a dancer, you're executing so many steps mm -hmm. on behalf of other people's projects, mm -hmm. right? But then when you get into a position to put your voice in it, you're asking a deeper question. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm there in my career. Mm -hmm. Like most of my career, I've been doing all the projects I've been hired for. Mm. and getting to execute other people's visions mm. but very rarely have i like put my message all the way through on a project yeah mm -hmm. it's been just my best execution of their mm. message that i kind of align with sure. right and now I'm, I'm getting that that yearning which is why i even started this podcast because it's like there's something else i want to tap into there's a voice now mm. it's like i think at the beginning it was can i make it look professional yeah right can i make it look good now my stuff looks good now what is it saying exactly there's only, like you said, it's not about the step because I, because sometimes the appropriate step is no step for that character. Stillness. Right. You know, we just went to New York uh, a couple weeks ago and we saw our first Broadway. We saw Chicago and oh, yeah. yeah, I'd never seen one before. I had done Chicago in like Did you? 2005. I stepped into Chicago for a, a nice like eight to 10 months. To, was, to dance in it? Well, or, or to sing, act, and to, dance. yeah, to yeah. do the oh, you have to, you yeah. Know, I was one of the, you know, beautiful piece of work. That must have been right. incredible to do it. I mean, when I, I wonder when we, who you saw. Do you remember who you saw as Roxy and Velma or no? I don't have the names off the top of my head. Okay. I followed them all on Instagram, but I forgot. Yeah. Um, I, cause I definitely I looked them up and I was like, I need to. Who was who was Roxy? I wonder if it was a, a um, short Sandy she had blonde, bangs, short blonde hair. Um, yeah, short blonde hair. I had the face though. Really, yeah, good, really good. Yeah, really phenomenal, has, phenomenal execution. And it was just seeing that much excellence, also in the how everything was put together. Right, mm. the the orchestra took up like more than yes. half the stage. Yeah, yeah. So they only have that first yeah. twenty percent, yeah. the front of stage, and yet the entire story was told mm. with the least amount of the stage. And it just goes to show when there's excellence and intention in the lighting cues and when to do it this mm -hmm. way, when to backlight it, when to front light it, when to do this. And you're just like, and I was noticing yeah. how everything was synced up. It was it was one of my favorite ah. productions to be a part of. I mean, I had done Fosse 
on Broadway, you know what I mean? So that was really thrilling for me. There was a piece called Fosse on Broadway or you did Fosse's pieces on Broadway? There was a show called Fosse. Okay. It was all of his Bob Fosse's work. Yeah. And Anne Ryan King, the great Anne Ryan King. Yeah. Who sadly passed not too long ago, but um, was his muse. She, I mean, she was everything Bob Fosse. <laughs> wow. And so I was hired by Anne Ryan King. And, and uh, the late Gwen Verdon, his wife. So I, I was lucky enough to work with them, which is great. So yeah. you, if you were singing on that, was that the only singing job you did? Because No, I'd studied uh, voice while I was in New York because you're living in New York. You want to be right. Broadway, you got to sing. You got to sing, you got to dance, you got to act all the same. But prior to, to doing Broadway, you didn't, you weren't doing like voiceover gigs in between no. doing... no. Right, like you didn't use was, your vo voice professionally unless it was that, right? I was auditioning for shows and having to sing and bring my music in and be a singer. Because you have to be able to really hold, you have to legitimately sing. You know, you don't... You Did it feel do. weird for you, you being a more quiet person mm. singing like that? I mean, I guess so, yeah. But then you, like, like anything, it's everything's a process and a, and a journey and you never arrive. Right? Right. Like if you're not getting better and you're not growing, then you've arrived. So yeah, that's it. You're there. I don't think so. Yeah, it sounds satisfying. So. Any artist, if you're a great artist, yeah, you're always evolving. There's always more to discover, more to figure out. What more could you do? Yeah. What more do you want? What more don't you want? What are you? What's the next step? What isn't the next step? Those are all for any artist, right? Is there anything that you used to believe earlier in your career that now you no longer believe? That there's some some limiting belief about yourself or about the world or the industry? Yeah, or... yeah probably. I mean, any anything you can think of, like anything, something that you were particularly wrong about. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think as any dance, like any dancer, you 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 slowly mature as a dancer. Mm. You know, and you don't, you know, you can, you can become the greatest dancer you can be through training and hard work. Right. But they're really, I mean, I grew up with the word, the best. And I guess it's, it's. What does that mean to you, the best? Well, it meant something different when you're 18. And now it means nothing to me. <laughs> Did your parents push you to be the best? No, no. They never had a no, high no. expectations? Uh-uh. No, they weren't I, saying you should go to college and get a real job. Never, no. Were they like hippies? Or were they, yeah, they, no. No? They were, they were just chill, like, sure, it was be a dancer. It was evident that I, I could dance okay. from early on. They could tell. They were like, I mean, well, you I, got this. I mean, I, music and, and <laughs> dance and music, song, singing, dance, all kinds of different, like, different kinds of music were in my house growing up. Lots of... Uh, world music, black music, s Brazilian, um, yeah. seriously, Latin yeah. music, Spanish music. Everything was in my house. I grew up with a lot of Motown, a lot of watching Soul Train, American Bandstand, everything. We watched everything. Yeah. But it was music and dance because, you know, I grew up Greek Orthodox and, you know, my mom's Greek, my dad's Italian. So I had that good culture and like music and like the love of dance and movement was like everything you know <laughs> and as a family you guys oh yeah we watch stuff three in the morning like oh i love doing, that like just you know as greek people breaking dishes and like you know what i mean and, yes. like, and loving loving and being in new york city like in the center of culture yes. culture everything everyone you know, the, everything was just... The culture you know. exchange of that, right? People from all different backgrounds. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I remember, like, just having an array of friends and being an artist. You know, my mom did makeup and hair. So she was, like, in that creative zone. You know what I mean? I love that. Yeah. That's really and, nice. And, like, my, my mother... I lived, like, not too far from, like, 20 minutes from... Coney Island. Yeah, I've heard Brooklyn. of it. Yeah. And there was a place like, you know, there's like the rides. There's like the cyclone, the famous cyclone. The first roller coaster to go upside down, right? 
No, it was a, the cyclone. Okay, this the cyclone. roller coaster okay, was okay. famous, and it was like wood, and it was like oh, the old wooden one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the OG scary one. As, yeah, yeah. Scary as all hell. The one where like the seatbelt barely oh, holds you. Yeah, it was scary, <laughs> and it was like the first drop. Oh my god! But but my mother used to take me and my brother at like eleven o'clock at night uh, to Coney Island, and we'd ride the bumper cars where the DJ was the sickest DJ <laughs> in Brooklyn, and the music was out of control incredible like underground underground sound awesome. like that you didn't hear on the radio but it was so filled with like soul and funk and groove that like oh my god so we would go my mom would say let's go 11 o'clock at night and we'd ride the bumper cars and it was dark with all the lights and the mm. music it was so incredible so that's beautiful I that your, your parents really, had a sense of life. Oh, yes. Life for sure. They, they, they knew good music. They knew good, they knew good movement. They knew what was good. Their taste in, in people and just, you know, being New Yorkers and coming from Brooklyn. It's a good, it's a good place. That's beautiful, yeah. man. That's a really beautiful thing that, mm -hmm. that environment of also the family jointly appreciating art. That's something mm -hmm. my family does too. Mm -hmm. Every time we go home for Christmas, we'll all watch a, a movie together, but everybody mm -hmm. intently, and then we'll go in the kitchen and talk about it for two hours, break it down, this scene, oh, this scene, and that reminds me of this one. Love it. And somebody will bring up a YouTube clip, and, yeah. and it's like it's like yeah. a round table yeah. artist energy exchange. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's nice to appreciate that. I think sometimes yeah. uh, when people become professional creators, I've seen it to where they act like they're too cool for school. Like all they have to say is something negative about projects. It's like, no, you can still be a fan. It's okay for you to oh, just yeah. be like, oh, I love the way they sure, like it's because it keeps you passionate. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So for me, I, I think uh, the, the same when I'm going back to saying like the best, <laughs> you want to be the best as you're growing up and yeah. learning and growing and all that stuff. And, you know, you're immature, whatever. And now, now that like maturity sets in, it's like, I became the, I think, the best dancer I could be even at 30. Mm. You know, I stepped into like the role of my life, like in Fosse. I was a lead, a featured lead on Broadway at 30. Amazing. And it was the hardest, like, you know, role, dance. It's like a four minute solo, like iconic solo that Fosse created in a show originally called Dancing in the 70s. And then they brought this show back to Broadway with all of that material in the year 2000, um, Fosse on Broadway. And I stepped and I replaced Desmond Richardson. Wow. He was in the Tony nominated role. And he, when once he left the show, I was hired to step in and, and into his role. That's incredible. It was great. Cause then, but I was looking up at him in high school as the greatest thing I'd ever seen. And then now you're filling in the shoes. Coming in and on Broadway. And I was, I, my, that was my Broadway debut. I stepped into a featured lead role in a Fosse wow. show. And I was worked with the legendary great Gwen Verdon and Anne Ranking. Wow. I mean, it was just so incredible. Did you, was that feeling like the pinnacle of you as a dancer? Was, well, I had just come off tour with Janet Jackson. Okay. So you already did that. <laughs> on her Velvet Rope World Tour. Wow. The greatest, one of the greatest projects ever ever tina landon wow dancing with seanette hurd kelly kono gil doldalow what <laughs> yeah an amazing group of dancers teresa espinoza mm. rob vincent michael andrews you know i love teresa she's mm. cool i used to stay at one of her airbnbs or yeah yeah property of her thing i used to live yeah. on her apartments yeah Dude, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, when you do a role like that, do mm -hmm. you say it's time for me to move on to being a choreographer? Or were you I, still I, like, I, I, I can still, keep dancing? I was still dancing. I was dancing for, you know, luckily Tina Landon was so good to me and so gracious and one of the best choreographers I've ever worked with and one of the best human beings. And so she put me in some other projects like Ricky Martin's Live in La Vida Loca and Je Jennifer Lopez you know, just a, a bunch of projects and like, so it was great. It was so, so cool to like do all of that work. And then um, in a, like around 2006, yeah. So You Think You Can Dance came along and, so, and I just jumped in. Did you enjoy 
meeting your idols. Because a lot of times they say sometimes maybe you should or shouldn't. But meeting some, not <clears throat> not projecting that they were your idols, but working with people like Janet Jackson on that level. Oh, well, that was otherworldly. So Janet Jackson is one of the greatest people to work for ever. How would you describe her vibe? Like... a good question like i guess um like a quiet fire Mm. (laughs) you know so it's like so strong you could feel the greatness you could feel the strength you could feel the that magical magnetic gift emanating from her all in one, all right through her eyes. It's like, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul. Yeah. You know, and she, she's just, you know. Do you remember the first time you met her? The hello moment? I auditioned for the Janet album with the songs like, That's the Way Love Goes, If, right? Uh, And so I had auditioned. There was a bunch of us who auditioned. I think Carrie Annie Nava audition too we were all like jennifer lopez was in there too auditioning and but usually you don't meet the artist in an audition you don't get to really at talk the call to back them. okay call back we we yeah we met her and uh we sat down and there was a very short interview i think she probably wanted to get a feel for who you are as a person so they just asked us what do you like to do what do you do for fun yeah and i was just like i was just kind of like i just couldn't even believe i was sitting there right and I had long hair at the time, you know. And so, like, I was chosen to be one of the dancers on the If video, one of the greatest dance videos of all time. Iconic. And uh, that was pretty fantastic. And it was amazing. You say there's, like, a special energy that comes from these mm-hmm. people that mm-hmm. form on an excellent level. Mm-hmm. How much of that do you think is, like, God-given? And how much of that was that they built it up? I think it's all of it. Yeah, it's all of it, right? It's through hard work and perseverance, you know, and a God-given talent or whatever you want to call it, some sort of innate gift, you know, something that you can't really describe. Is there commonality, if you could even pick one, between all the people that you've worked with that you consider excellent or the best? I know that everybody has their own way of doing it, but is there a... um something you notice consistently with them? Yeah, everyone's gift is on a high level because I think frequency, like, I feel like, I think like what you, like, it's like work ethic is so important, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, it never went out of style. Right. It never left. Right. So anyone who thinks that it left, it never went out of style. Right. Right. Hard work never went out of style. And what you put and what you put forward into your craft, I think I think I can only speak for me specifically. I think I was lined up and coupled with the names that were a direct match for what I was looking for and thirsting for and hung mm. I had a hunger for. Yes. You know, I saw the excellence of Desmond Richardson and all these incredible people at this level, at this excellent level. I was, so I was like, like looking at what that could be. And so when I moved to LA, I meet Paula Abdul. I met Michael Peters, the great Michael Peters, right? Um, Janet Jackson, you know, and then Rob Marshall, you know, Twyla Tharp. Um, Sounds like they all have this hunger of contribution, like they really care. I think so when I danced, I think they, Debbie Allen, I connected right away. Marguerite Derricks, you know, you know, all these people, when I went in the room and danced, I must, we, we were speaking each other's language. Yes. So it's like energy, it's frequency, it's vibration, I think. Like you shouldn't have to push somebody that hard. No. They either want to yeah. dedicate that much or they don't, yeah. especially yeah. at that level. Yeah. Totally. I agree. Mm. Cause I, I think that when I am tapped into a state of giving, it gives me energy. Mm. 
when I'm not fully tapped into it, something feels like work or it feels like a chore. Mm. And it could be not granted True. everybody at some point yeah, needs yeah. to rest. Mm. But when I'm really passionate about a project, it doesn't even matter what they're paying me. When no. I really care, no. when I really care. And recently I took on um, two passion projects because there's these people that I really wanted to work with. And I hit them up and I said, I'm going to direct something with you. Mm. And it's happening. Mm. Like you don't have to pay me. Like it's, we're it, going to create. It's not even work. It's like, it's like literally. Like, like I like your mission, and yeah. I'm going to contribute. Yeah. I I see. Cause there's this one speaker. I love all the the passion he puts into it. I'm like, mm. I want to contribute to that mission. Mm -hmm. I see how hard they're 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 making their art, and I notice it. I'm like, ah, because I know because I I want to tap into that good feeling. Yeah. As well of like I feel like I can contribute to that. Mm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think. The reason I ask that is because I feel that the global conversation, at least that, that I read online, I think a lot of people are disconnected from their energy of giving. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of trauma that we all, and everybody has trauma, we all are dealing with it. But I feel so much of the conversation right now is about what I'm not getting, mm -hmm. right? The government needs to give me this, they need to give me this, everybody needs to give, 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 give. Mm -hmm. but. Um, the people who end up actually making things happen, they're the ones putting forth the, the effort mm -hmm. to change it, right? Like mm -hmm. even if, if you go back to like a civil rights level, like Martin Luther King, like he was creating the vision for what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just saying what he doesn't want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His dream wasn't that every white person will get yeah, punished. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? That wasn't his dream. Yeah, yeah. His dream was what he actually wanted. Right. He was focused on the, on the solution. Mm on the vision for what he wants on the right. stage of life, not on the problems, right? We may have to fix the problems to get the vision, but the collective conversation right now is so looping on the problem mm. that I really, I hope we can get more of us to tap into like what you're saying, right? Like when you're working on these major projects, not, not every single person is gonna work with John Jackson, but it doesn't matter. It's about what that represents, mm -hmm. representing wanting to contribute at that level. You can contribute at that level to your family, yeah, to your yeah, whatever. At this point, I just want to be in the room with people who uh, vibe the way I do and and differently, and where we can both like feel that that excellent energy. Mm. You know, so I just recently did a concert here in LA called Full Circle. Okay. It was at the Wilshire Bell. Okay. And Jackie Slight, who's one of my teachers, you know, a force in the dance world. She asked like myself, Mandy Moore, Ryan Heffington, Dominique Kelly, Liz Imperio, mm. and a few others to create works for a, a show where people could come to. Because we haven't had a show anywhere. Right? Yeah. So it happened like maybe uh, in July. It was packed and it was so incredible. <laughs> it was so incredible. And like, I had like, I was like, when Jackie Slight calls, you say yes. Yes. And we all said yes. All of us. This is it a dance show? It's a dance show. Beautiful. She's like, I want, I want to have a dance show in LA at the Wilshire E. Bell, a really nice theater where people come in and sit down in a theater. Yes. And that place was packed, packed. And the dancers, everybody was like, and I had selected six female dancers. And it was like, what I, it, and it was called Full Circle. Mm. And what Jackie gave me as a young dancer, I wanted to give back to her. And the dancers that I had instantly said, yes. And our energy, the synergy between us, it was one of my best works I think I've created. And it was just, and that night was so filled with so much excellence, like it was yes. crazy. Like everyone's work was just <laughs> unbelievable. And the great thing is when, that when you have that, it's a collaborative frame. Mm -hmm. Even though you all push each other to be better, the more excellent everybody is in the room, the more excellent it makes you want to become. Not to be better than them, but oh, because yeah. they help you see what's possible oh, within cool. yourself. It all shine brightly together. <laughs> there is no better. According to who? Who, who has the rule book on better and best? Right. Is there a rule book? Because art, last time I checked, is subjective. Yeah. What you like, somebody else might not. Yes. So you don't get to, you just make your art and you put it out there. It's to give. It's not to get. Yes. If your intention is to get, I think it's slightly skewed, don't you think? I agree. You make art to give it. 
to 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 in a world where it feels brutal, where people need to feel better. So after you, you know, this this man, his name is Alonzo King. He has this. He's incredible. You should look him up on YouTube. He's 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 got some amazing words of wisdom. He talks about about um, you know just creating and just doing uh, with not being in your head. Yes. You know, like as a performer, like he says, like you know, if you're on stage doing a piece of choreography and in your head we're worried about you we're like are you are they okay are they gonna make is it is everything okay but when you're just doing and serving the art and serving what the choreography is what the choreographer asks you to do what the director asks whoever asks you you know as artists as a dancer i loved being in a room with a choreographer going in the room and they're creating yes. i wasn't thinking like am i going to get the job no <laughs> no right. i was like i just want to be with this choreographer wherever they're going you know what i mean mm. wherever they're going i don't know where they're going but i just want to make because as the dancer you're the crayon you're you're the paint yes you're the paint you have to make the the we're all in the room together to make one vision happen one picture yes. it's not about you or you or me it's about everything yes it's this whole picture for all of us for the person creating the vision to make the art if you're a real artist if you're, if you're a real artist, we're making the art. We're all in this together. I need to get out of your way so that this can happen. It's not about, oh, you need to, it's not about ego. Right. You can't have ego. Because everybody's there to serve the main mission. Now, people may have different perspectives to add, yeah. but you have to serve yeah. the mission yeah. of the day. Yeah. That's a, you, you went into the room because you trust that the creation and the people, all the players in the room, are we're all vibing on the same thing. Yes. We're all in the same energy, the same, we're all on the same page. So you walked into the room, you said, I want to participate. Right? Yes. Right? Isn't that true? Yes, absolutely. So you walked into the room, you said, yeah, I want to play, I want to do this. Yeah. I want to make art with you because I, I like what you do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and they say, ego, I heard this saying a long time ago, Ego means etching God out. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yes. So, because when you're when you're meditating or when you're doing your art, right? When you're in that present moment, you disappear. Like I remember those times where I used to do like these motivational speeches at conventions, and when I would be in a really good flow with it, mm -hmm. I would the whole just mm -hmm. I would just be a vessel. Like at yeah. the end, I even forgot what I said. I just mm. once I just tap into yeah. not thinking about how I look. Right. It's like, just get the message out there. True. Yeah. So interesting, man. I love the world of, of shows. Like, mm. growing up with that and seeing the process, I love every part of it. The rehearsal, mm. the concept, oh, what we should do, what kind of lights are we going to get, how's it going to, what's the opening thing? I love mm. looking at, sometimes I'll go through a bunch of people's Netflix, like, stand-up specials, and I'll be like, what's the first line they say? Or what's the first scene of a movie? Because it just, it sets the tone. There's yeah, so, yeah. There's such an art to it, you know. And when you said you went to that concert, to that show multiple times, which one was it? Jerome Robbins Broadway. Yeah. That's what I did when I saw um, Kanye West Glow in the Dark tour. Mm. I don't know if you're familiar with that particular tour. No. It was the first time a hip hop concert mm. had real creative direction. Ah. Prior to well, that one, yeah, it was like, for the most part, like mm. the 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 big rappers at the time were just having like a DJ on stage, mm. a bunch of their friends with white T-shirts and. Mm. whatever lights yeah kind of, he built a mountain on stage a spaceship he had an orchestra mm. a storyline why we're going from this song to that song a transition yeah, 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 a thing yeah. whatever yeah. instrumental breakdowns and i went to it and i was like i have to go see it. i saw it three times in chicago then i flew to denver and saw it again and i just ordered the tour book i just got it on ebay mm -hmm. got it off an of auction because i love a great show mm. it's such a cool gift to give yeah yeah, yeah. Totally. and to and to receive as well like I love going to concerts. I love going to stand up comedy. Now I love going. I do too. I do too. Uh, we're going to one tonight, actually. Are you? Which one? To the improv. Oh, we're going to cool. see um, Damon Wayans is going to be there, oh, Craig nice. Robinson, and Burt Kreischer. Okay, great. But we go to like comedy shows like three or four times a month. Like, I love comedy. Ah. The fact that there's a whole <laughs> industry of people just trying to make people laugh. I love comedy. It's like when it's done well. Yeah. You know, it's a dance of words. You know, so it's like, yeah, there's some really good comedians out there. <laughs> what, 
when you, did you decide to fully choreograph and stop dancing? Um, I never stopped dancing, so that was important. Because I think for me, uh, it was important to dance when I choreograph. Because I know what good choreography feels like, because I'd worked with so many great choreographers, mm. that my body knows what good choreography is. So if I dance it, my choreography, when I create it... Um, so you actually, you full out do the choreo I, yeah, yourself, yeah. yeah. But you stopped dancing professionally, like... Yeah, I wasn't auditioning for... You know, I mean, I recently did In the Heights, you know, Chris Scott asked yeah, yeah. me to do it and he's so incredible. So you don't say no. That was a great movie. Great. Amazing. So much fun. Um, and a beautiful project too, like dancing and choreography. And that is like outstanding. And so, yeah, when projects really speak to me, I will do it. Right. Yeah. Now you can just choose to do it and pop now in. I, now I choose to be where I want to be. Yeah. You know, because I've danced, I've done, I've done it. I, I've danced my dreams. I've done everything I wanted to do. And so I don't have any, there's no regret like, oh, I should have, you know, so now it's just like fun. Now I dance for fun. Yeah. And it feels really good. That's beautiful. Because I don't have to, I don't have to try to do anything. I just do it. You know what I mean? And it's not like if you don't do the project, no. it's you're just gonna no. ding your career or whatever. It's yeah. like okay, you just yeah. want to. What do you want to contribute to? And in my life as a dancer, I said no a lot to many jobs. For what reasons? It just didn't. It just didn't feel right in my soul. And no meant yes. <laughs> a no to this means you're opening a no yes for meant something. Yes else. to me. Mm. I mean, I should have said yes. I thought at the time, and I struggled with it and decisions and like uh, procrastinating and but i realized i wasted all that time it just didn't speak to me i was making myself feel like i'm supposed to do this this is so great i should do this but now it was an, it was an easy no <laughs> because of the projects or artists you didn't align with or no, something no, about it, the vibe it was, of it it was a great project there were great projects but for some reason my, my inner guides just felt like didn't have that feeling like yes i want to like jump up in the air and land horizontally on the floor because i got this job right yeah so and you had to do that i think having was, faith that financially you would be okay even though you're trying to i was okay i didn't do things for the money yeah i didn't do it for money i did it because i wanted to be with these people in the room or this choreographer or this director or this artist or whatever so when did you start working with taylor I started working with Taylor in like 2012, the end of 2012, I think. Yeah. What was that journey like? Amazing. Like, oh my God. What when you first met her, what was that like? It was spectacular. Like, I, they gave me the song Trouble and created a huge, spectacular performance for the AMAs, hired incredible dancers. She walked in the room and she had the was beaming of it with excitement when she saw it that's great that must be a good feeling of a connection so so you were hired for it and you made the choreo but she hadn't seen the choreo yet right mm -hmm. so when she walked in she was walking into a room where the you were training the dancers i was and, putting it together and with a, with the maybe had somebody standing in for the, her or whatever set, yes yeah yeah created it corner to corner such great music and um we we brought real like full dance a full spectacle into yeah. the world and that was exciting and she loved it that's great mm -hmm. and then did that form a relationship mm -hmm. or was that like yeah. how did that build yeah, some people I, get hired just for one job and that's it how well, did that turn I, into well, a i you know i just thought i was going to do that and that was it and um i um i went on to choreograph the red tour and um some yeah, some great, all of the promo. She did lots of promo, um, different TV shows or what have you. And um, why do you think she picked you? I think it was energetic. Yeah. She had a fire in her, in her core and so did I. And I don't know. It was just, it was a, a great match. And I think we just, yeah, we just, it was easy. It was an easy exchange. Do you think it, the best exchanges are the ones that are easy when it's 
it being easy is that a metric for it being aligned it was a good flow yeah it was a good flow for sure yeah Yeah. you could push her but in like she wanted you to give what you wanted to give right like she was like we were i think we i connected to the music and 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 yeah it just worked yeah that's great and then i had gone on to do um was that the biggest tour that you did as a choreographer that was the first tour that I ever did. Oh, that was the did first one? We got for an artist, yeah. Wow. So it was That's great. a pretty big one to start off with. <laughs> yes. yes, it was a great tour. Amazing. Such great music. Did you get to physically go on the tour the whole time too? And, no, uh, or did you little. set it and let I it go? I set it. I went to a few cities, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Was that as fulfilling as the Broadway work? Oh, it was it was a different well because I was I was a performer on Broadway. I danced right. on Broadway, so I'm the performer. Right. Here I come, I'm coming in as a creator. Right. So it was it, it was a, a different. very different, different. It was a different uh, uh, approach, you know. Does it matter when you're creating for a big stadium? Because she wasn't doing theater shows. No, she was doing stadium shows. But I had danced on many big stages with some right. great artists, so I understand what that what that the level of what that is for sure well yeah. i was going to ask from a choreography standpoint yeah. if the way you would make the movements on a bigger stage oh, if yeah, they're yeah. different because obviously it they is. have the imag screen it but it's yeah. still it's different you're not sure. doing all the little mm-hmm. on broadway there were so many micro steps that were happening yeah that i saw because we were right there it's more intimate yeah. but i that wouldn't work on a huge place it needs to be oh. more yeah, pronounced yeah. clean yeah. like yeah, longer yeah, things yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you ever get into creative directing and lighting and that kind of stuff? Um, no, we had a great we have a great creative director, um, Baz Halpin, who yeah. was so lovely and so um, just so seamless in the way he works. And um, yeah, we work great together. Did you ever yourself get into anything like that, like lighting or that kind of stuff? Is well, that stuff had, that you? I had spent fifteen seasons on So You Think You Can Dance, okay. directing and creating the look the lighting the camera shots for my piece oh so they actually gave you guys that much control well we we tell them what music we pick the music we create the storyline we ask for the lighting well obviously you have a great lighting designer there right um emmy award winner but you'll say like i want it cold here yes. and a uh, spotlight we, here we're creating the world on right. that stage we're so we are create create we have creative directing our work right which you know i was fortunate enough to win an emmy for that's uh, incredible for a piece of mine in season five that's incredible a, a contemporary piece you know did that feel validating when you got the Emmy, how did it feel? Great. <laughs> Surprising. Surprising. Shocking, great. Yeah. Did it? It's such a high honor in, in as a choreographer. Right. I mean, to win the Tony or the Emmy is the highest honor you can receive, I think. Yeah. 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 Did that change the way you looked at yourself? Like, did you get an ego boost? And we're like, yeah, I'm an Emmy nominated choreographer. I, um, I... I was not in a bad way, but did you know. did you feel a noticeable like what did you I felt like I had reached a a a different level mm. for sure, but I it didn't stop how hard I felt like I needed to work. Right. The day after. <laughs> right. I think there's like this illusion that people have of like when you get the thing that then you stop the work. But really the people at the highest level, they're getting up early. They're they love the work, it, right? I, for me, it's about the work. You know, you can't create for an award or anything like that. You have to like, just, I like being in the process with people. I like, like uncovering what's, what's at the root of the equation. You know what I mean? Because it's like a, you have to problem solve what, how can I create something that's, um, that feels organic, that feels, you know, whatever, like a piece of, a beautiful piece of visual art that, yeah. says, that says something. Was it ever one of your goals to win an Emmy in the vision I board? Think, uh, you know, I, I was sitting there 
you know, with some great choreographers. There was a bunch of us, like Sonia, Taya, um, Mandy Moore, Mia Michaels, Wade Robson. You know, there's some great people. And they were all getting nominated for Emmys. And, you know, so I just was like, wow, that'd be great. But I just kept on working, just taking the project and doing your best at what's right in front of you, not thinking ahead. Because I think, you know, now just looking at that, that you know, awards are great. They're amazing. They're incredible. Yeah. Yeah. To be noticed, recognized, all that. But it's not everything. <laughs> you know, it's not the thing. It's a recognition of the thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love hearing that because, you know, we can all theorize about this, but only so many people have won Emmys. Mm. So it's nice to ask somebody, right? And what I love, what I'm getting reaffirmed from your story is just the love of the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Because mm -hmm. that's even why how recently I got into working out. It's for the longest time I would put off working out because yeah. I would be like, well, A, it feels like a chore. And B, I don't want to do it just to get buff because then I have a body that I have to keep up and for the vanity reasons and I can talk to girls anyway. So it's just like, it, 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 I wasn't aligned with it, right? But then we got a personal trainer like three or four months ago and I was doing it for my mental health, mm. right? I said, hey, phase one of our training, I just want to enjoy the gym. Mm. Let's just start there for the first mm. two months. Make it to where I crave going. And now I do. Like earlier today, Right before you got here, I was a little stressed out because something happened with like an insurance for a shoot. So I, I was like, you know, I need to do some push. And I was like, my mind now knows that I can use exercise as a process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so now if I get a six pack, that's a cool byproduct. Mm -hmm. But I would, I don't want to work out to get a six pack because right, right, right. that's not motivating enough. Because right. I don't care about it that much. I'm wearing a shirt most right. of the time. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's a, it feels like it would be a, it would take too much work to keep up a six pack. It's totally. like. A six pack is just what might happen right. if I love working out, exactly. if, if, I can, if I can enjoy doing things with my body and now we're surfing and playing tennis and yep. I just want to use my body, yeah, right? Yeah. And I feel like the rewards are the same way. Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes when we're coming up, we can have that benchmark. There's nothing wrong with wanting a six pack either. There's nothing wrong with wanting an Oscar, but know that, nope. that that's a result of the uh, process yeah, of yeah, making totally, the art. Totally. And if you focus more on the process, that may or may... Agreed. Because you only yeah. get it by doing great on the process exactly. anyway. Exactly, and getting lost in what you're doing. Yeah. You can't worry about, like, you know, if you're in class, taking class, you can't worry about the camera. Right. You can worry about getting the step right first before it goes on the camera. Yeah. Not the other way around. Yeah. What are you filming? Right. Do you even have the work? What are you putting, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like. Prioritize what we're focusing on. But then again, Who's to say, like, what, what, what anybody feels about whatever they're doing? You're the driver of your car. So. But I think it's good to be at least conscious of the choices, hmm. right? Like, I don't think that there's any necessarily good or bad, no. for the most part, choices, right? It's just like, am I doing this intentional? Like, is it bad to sit and watch Netflix all day? Not really. If you say intentionally, today I'm taking the day off yeah, and I just yeah. want to watch comedy all day, hmm. that's fine. But if I'm just doing it to avoid being alone or to avoid hearing my quiet thoughts, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the same action with a different context mm -hmm. can be a very depleting mm -hmm. result. You know, where I could do the same exact thing but have so much joy from it. If I'm going to okay. be on Instagram, let me engage with it. Totally. What are you guys up to? You know what I mean? It's different than like just mindlessly. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, for sure. Which is crazy how addictive that is. Kind of like how uh, back in the day they used to say that cigarettes were healthy, right? Like doctors used to prescribe them as like weight loss and stuff. And um, now we know, right? But I feel like many years from now, we'll look back at social media like, what can you believe they just let everybody just use it all the time and the mental health damage it could do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah. I don't think, um, I think it's not helping a lot of people, you know. I agree. It's a tool that's so powerful that it can just as quickly send you on a downward spiral as an upward mm -hmm. one. Clearly, you know. But listen, you, everybody uses it for different reasons. You know? Yeah. So, just whatever you do, you know. But I, it's fun. It's light. It's 
it's about work, you know. Yeah. What's on your vision board now? What do you, now that you, since you've accomplished so much and we haven't even, oh, we've only skimmed the surface of all the stuff that you've done, but mm -hmm. just connecting with you in the present mm -hmm. and looking forward. I would like what to, your desires? I would like to learn more about directing, um, telling story, mm -hmm. maybe writing. Yeah. Express Pro it in produce, that form. Producing, directing, writing. Yeah, because it feels like it would be the next step. So I'm curious. And how do you approach transitioning? Like, are you still actively taking on whatever? Like, if somebody calls you for a tour that might take up six months of your time, are you going to say yes or are you going to say no, I'm thinking about writing? Um, right now, I just want to, like, step into something that feels like I'm tapping into a another um, field of education to, to mm. grow as an artist where I go, where I, I haven't, mm. you know what I mean? Back in the student mode of like understanding. I think so. A deeper yeah, level. Because, yeah. Cause I feel like I, yeah, I feel like I could achieve something, some level, higher level of like, of understanding as an artist that way in that regard, you know? Yeah. And so. Is there a particular kind of story you're yearning to tell? Or you just know you want to tell um, stories more directly? I do know that um, I'm very, in, like when I watch film, I'm just a lot more aware of the direction, the lighting, the the subtleties, right. the um, how they didn't like act like really like in your face tell you this, but they're hinting at it. Mm. And they're not assuming that we, the audience, are stupid. You know what I mean? Right. There's just a really like clever way of of telling story and just in casting. And I'm just so interested in casting and how the camera moves as a dance. I mean, and when to move it and not move it, right? When is the camera still? When is it yep, handheld exactly. to signify unstableness yep. or whatever? Mm -hmm. I love actors. I love the art of of storytelling and yes. just like the color, saturation, how the editing, the the music, sound the soundtrack. Oh my god, uh, that's in the direction. Sound mixing. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so important. It's so. When we so talked about potentially doing a project together, we were talking about sound mixing yes. and the importance of that and hearing the yes. voices and the things. Yes. It, there's such an art form to it. Of it, it really makes a project so different when you have proper sound design. I love it. I love it. It's so great. Yeah. And it have all those elements come together in one thought. Yes. One thought. And I like that it's like a cohesive kind of like when I ever look at beautiful like architecture mm -hmm. pages, right? Like really well designed homes. Everything feels like it was thought together, right? Like the couch and the this and the, it, it all, it's part of a palette. A great movie or a great show is like that too, right? We were just uh, finishing watching Atlanta. Have you seen that show? Mm -hmm. But uh, Childish Gambino, he made it. It's a, a great artist. It's a masterpiece. Great it's artist. it's basically, I think they call it Afro surrealism. Mm -hmm. It's a story just about this guy and his buddy who wants to be a rapper and they're just going through life, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like kind of like a suspense Mm. Kind of like horror show in a weird way. It's it's weird. It's hard to explain. It's mm. just it's just it's cinematically beautiful, mm. right? Like they'll do the things where you know uh, during a whole conversation they'll just have some like a shot in the back of somebody's head and you can't fully see. It. It's like a silhouette. They're very patient with it. Mm. The way they shoot it, they treat what on the surface level seems like a a basic concept. Mm. Two guys wanting to make it in the hip hop world, but it's so much deeper than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll have episodes where. It's not even about the main characters. They'll do a random episode in the season that has completely new characters that just paints a picture of what the times are like mm -hmm. in their environment. And then it informs you a little bit about what the mood is like, why there's so much tension, oh, yeah. especially racial tensions that happen in the next episodes and they'll go back to the main story, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. like, and the fact that somebody got together in a meeting and thought of all that, mm -hmm. the team, and he said, hey guys, we're gonna have episodes without any of the main characters. Mm. A complete B-story episode in the middle of this. 
like like you were saying, it's it's all these choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I find it so beautiful, mm-hmm. and that's that's definitely you know next level for me as well. After building you know the companies and like the shorter commercial type of projects, yeah. it's when you do a film, it's a more of a long commitment. It might be a yes. year or multi year yes. process of for developing sure. it, right? Mm. To me, what's exciting about that is the process of decision making. So much of my decision making is very um, on the fly. Mm. Like I'm very good. Like I know how to plan, but I'm really good at just being there, feeling it, knowing what's right. Yeah. But for a project like that, you really need to plan it out. You do. You can't think of doing a steady camp the day of. You either are or you're not, because you have to plan everything around it. And yeah. how does it serve the story? Yeah. How does that serve this character moving forward in their arc very in the true. grander story, right? Yes. You can't just bring a steady camp because no. you like steady camps. No. Exactly. Right? Yeah, like I, I think I feel like I look at dance and I approach dance very differently now mm. in um you know probably more so than when i did like maybe 10 years ago yeah you know so i'm constantly i feel like i'm constantly growing and changing which is great and so you know even when i am looking at you know anything anything artful is like you know you you just look at the um the project and it and now it's like you know even when i'm teaching uh dance it's like you you're you, you want to teach dancers to have more patience with choreography, mm. not be so, not be so um, quick to like, I don't know what the word is to put it like if there's, if there is a beginning, a middle and an end to any great story, why would you give the end right at the beginning? Mm. Would you go to a movie if they told you the end five seconds in, would you stay for the rest of the movie if you knew the ending? Not really. Nope. So what makes you think we would want to be interested in what's going to happen? If you, you know, what's going to happen later on, if you've just told us everything in the first 10 seconds, we know what we've, what we are, have, are going to see. That's going to be right. If someone walks into a room yelling, you're not going to stay with whatever they're going to say. Why would you stay to listen to that? If it was like, I don't really want to hear this voice and it doesn't really matter what you're saying. It doesn't really matter what you're dancing if you're yelling right at the beginning because there's no place to go. Um, and unless you're just going from yelling and, to and quiet. Sometimes, right? yeah, yeah. sometimes so, some movement, you know, it makes sense for it to be big or whatever you want to. But it has to be intentional. It has to be very it has intentional. To be intentional, I think. You don't, they say cut to the chase. You don't start with the chase. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, what, that's what I'm trying to say. I said it better than I did. So I yeah. So for me, have some patience with the choreography, because we like we like to know what happened, you know, and then and then what else, and then be curious about what else is gonna happen, and what finally happens. I think there's know. power in patience. I notice there's it. Power in stillness. Yes. Sometimes you don't. It doesn't need a step. Like when what Michael Jackson you? would come out and just hold, mm-hmm. and just let it sizzle. And just not even move his face. And then the second he's like, yeah. And grab the glass. Because then the whole stadium goes crazy over you yeah. just grabbing your shades. Because you pa- magnify there's it. There's power. There's power in stillness, you know? There is. <laughs> you know, I also see that with um, more established music artists, mm-hmm. they're not afraid to be less in their own music videos. When it's a new artist, it's like, my face everywhere. You know, not that you can't have your face everywhere, but when you're an artist at a certain level, you can have a whole video where you're barely in it. And you're just like, no, this is the video to the song. I just, what I, I am the background character. What I, I always reference Sia mm. because I, I think it's so magical that the first time I saw her perform on, on a TV show and she was upstage in the corner, facing the corner. Yeah, with, with her the face mask. Covered. And I thought, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so into this. Yes. And I was like, and why am I into this? I'm into it because I feel like it's so courageous and so brave of her to not want to be seen because a lot, let's face it, it, it's a visual business, right? It's based on visual and, you know, people's beauty or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, But she... What I got from that, what I took away from that is, she's like, I don't really have to be seen. 
And she's being seen for not being seen, which is good. also vulnerable too. We love the song. She writes the music. She's still on the top of the charts with the songs. People love her. Her music videos are so um, creative and yeah. adventurous and so like, um, you know, so great. And it's like, and she has obviously like, her and Ryan Heffington have such a great, obviously, you can tell they're on the same page. It's awesome. And it's like. It's a very patient decision. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's brave. It's beautiful. It's all It's all things. She's like, no, I don't need to be seen. And, but she's still being seen for not being seen. Exactly. Which is also vulnerable and because you, it's yeah. saying that, hey, there's people in the audience that's, mm. some people in the audience are saying, I wish I could be on stage with my face. Other people are saying, if I was there, I'd want to be in the corner. And she's saying, I'm one of you, and here I am on stage, but in a corner. It's great. It's like vulnerably, I don't know what's the word for it is, but it's, mm. she's performing, but tuning into how she actually right. feels. She's like, no, I want to be here. What a great artist. What a great artist. I mean, so great. I like that. I like exploring why people make those kind of decisions. You know, like and sometimes it, it doesn't need to make sense to anybody but them. Yeah, like even this photo I have here was of the um, St. Pablo tour from Kanye, where mm. it was floor seats. It was a standing room only on the floor, and he had a stage that was floating above everybody, mm. and he was backlit the whole time. It's beautiful. Like his face was always in the shadow. Yeah, and he was just floating like across the whole arena, and mm -hmm. it's just like, I think you have to learn all the rules to break them, right? It's all. Thing, right learn the rules so you can break the rules True. right like you learn how to put great front lighting yeah, on somebody yeah yeah, yeah. And then one day choose to say you know what mm. no front lighting on you but on purpose yeah like some there's like you know videos music videos you know last a great music video adele's oh my god i haven't seen that one you should check it out yeah it's really good get right down the list it's really good i love it because it's so adventurous and it's so like it's so gritty it's like it's it, it, yeah it it just is super cool and the song and obviously Adele I mean right it's, it's and it's not something you'd expect from her so it's cool I love that it's like you thought she'd go one way and and she goes a different way and it's like ah oh, it's so refreshing you know yes because she all really all she has to do is step up to the mic and open her voice and sing right 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 that's what she that's what she does. It's so like magical. That voice, you know it when you hear it. You know, there's no one denying. We know the voice when we hear it. So that's what that's what Adele is. But this video is like so cool. I need to check it out. <laughs> and the direction, the movement. I think Meg Lawson is so great. So great. Awesome. Who else inspires you artistically? Artistically, as like um, I like this guy. John Baptiste. I've heard of him. Is that the one that um, take me to church? Uh, no. 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 What am I thinking of? No, you're thinking of Ho 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 Hosier. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no. Which one is John Baptiste? Great artist too, but he, John Baptiste is great. Such a good. Is artist. he the guy on Colbert? Um. The black guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's on the Colbert show. Okay, Jamel yeah. Jamel McWilliams works. Oh, he won a he won a Grammy for album of the year. John Baptiste, didn't he? Uh, yes. Okay, I need to check out that album. Yeah, so good, such good, refreshing, like cool, like amazing work they do together. Him and Jamel McWilliams, so great. Were you ever into hip hop? Uh, yeah, <laughs> all kinds of music. I'm a dancer. Yeah. Are there any hip hop artists that you particularly like? I mean, Kendrick is great. Great music. Um. Who else? Missy Elliott, so great. She's forever. She's forever, you know. Um, on your own time, what do you listen to? Like if you're driving um, in the car, what do you, what's on the radio? Well, you know, I, I will say there is a DJ on, on KC, KCRW. Great DJing on KCRW, the music and the flavors that they... Because it's very, like, with radio, it's sometimes you don't, Yeah. right? Do you notice? Yeah, like, I, I, I rarely listen to actual radio, but yeah, when I do, yeah. But if I'm listening, like, there is a DJ on KCRW that's pretty amazing. The the incredible, like, s 
ear for music that they have and the different the different like flavors and textures i'm like wow such a great taste in music mm. like song after song and it's not music i know yeah so good it's a good so dj that can actually good. blend oh, tracks a proper dj really really good music but like but being a dancer and an artist i really do love a lot of music world music i love um yeah, there's this one artist that I am. Um, Spaceship Boy. I mean, this is so many I can't even get into it because yeah. we'd be here for a really long time. But uh, yeah, there's just so many great. I mean, I can go through my playlist and just start to name them off. But do you think that dance has gotten to a point where you really can't put it into categories? I think so. Because a lot of times I'll see hip hop choreographers choreographing to like Adele or people that are more contemporary choreographing to Kid well, Cudi or whoever. So like, yeah. is there such a thing as? I just think that there's no rules in art. You you can create, you know, a lot of things are like in, in uh, when you're looking at style and genre in dance, there's a lot of things that are fused. You know, um, hip hop is fused with, with different kind of contemporary. Yeah jazz modern dance with hip-hop i've seen it done yeah so when you call yourself a choreographer you don't put a, a label no, on it you, so. you don't say i'm a hip-hop choreographer i feel like i've been exposed to so much different music and and styles and dance and movement that i uh, i think you know you're an artist you're a creator there you go and if somebody's an up-and-coming dancer now and mm -hmm. choreographer what advice would you have for them <laughs> Well, I think you just have to, I would say, just cre keep creating and um, don't be afraid of the stillness. And to, don't be afraid to stop and don't do anything because it's, sometimes it's a louder, it's a louder, um, what do you call it? Like download. It's more loud. So, you know, you don't have to keep moving in fear. Oh, you mean like actual in actual dancing? Yeah, yeah like stopping. Like, yeah. You, you know, don't be afraid to stop for a second and take it and really sit inside the music and be one. Get out of the way of the music instead of trying to like, um, like manhandle the music and, the, you know, and but I understand as a young creator, you want to really prove yourself. So I get it. But right. yeah, it's nice to like stop and take a minute. And let the audience take a breath for a second mm. to digest it for a second. What I just saw. Okay, then tell me more. Yeah, it's like when someone's talking too fast. Wait, 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 wait. wait slow. Say, it. can you just stop for a second? Because I didn't catch half of that. Right. It's the same thing in dance. As an audience, we're sometimes, sometimes we want more. Sometimes we. It's a, you know. There's no. Again, there's no rules. Yeah, I, I love that man. Mm -hmm. It really is because like the the industry can keep changing. Technology can keep changing, but at the end of the day, if somebody wants to be a professional artist, they have to love doing the art. Yeah. And the more you lose yourself in that process, the more likely the st stuff is going to come. Exactly. Exactly. But also the thing of... <laughs> I love it. I, oh my God, I love it. And the mic is right here. Hold on. I love it so much. Oh my God. <laughs> there you are. Oh, oh my God. Yes, he loves I, your energy. I know. I can feel it. I can feel it. And really, you can stay with me. There's really no rules. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, what was my point there? <laughs> we were talking about an up and coming dancer yeah, pausing, yeah, yeah. holding the yeah. moments. Yeah, like just like have like trust, trust the process, trust the process. Give yourself room to just actually figure out your voice first. What do you have to say? What is what is the what is the thing, you know? Yeah, because yeah. the individual career advice could change so much. But what yeah. you're saying there is just so important. Mm. I Did you see the show Genius on a National Geographic? They did a whole narrative scripted show where the first season was about Einstein and the second season was about Picasso. Mm. Beautiful. Ron Howard directed it. Oh. Antonio Banderas played uh, uh, Picasso. Fant like really well shot. There you go. And it showed him from the time he was a kid all the way to the end of his life. And what I didn't realize is that for like the first half of his life, he was like a poor artist just getting paid to do other people's styles. He was just copying. Give me something in the style of mm. such and such, right? And, and, and he wasn't happy and he wasn't succeeding either because mm. he was just learning to do the moves. 
Mm. Right? But then at some point, he decided to have a voice okay. and say, I see you this way. And he started nice. painting them, and, they, and then the, the Picasso style developed. Mm-hmm. And then that Picasso that we know now started like halfway through his creative career, where okay. he then understood mm-hmm. that he had his way of telling it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, trust that. I also think that it's good to trust your what you want, the picture you want to paint. Yeah. Do you think it's, I want to ask a couple more for the dance industry. I know we've been talking for a while now. We can, we can cut it whenever. But just for the dancers out there, do you think it's more important for a dancer to focus on being an individual star or being a team player in a group? Like if somebody wants to succeed as a dancer nowadays. Because <clears throat> in LA, I feel like there's a lot of soloists, a lot of people that are like mm-hmm. individually awesome. Um, I, I don't really know that I have the answer for that, but I think it's good to know. I think in saying it's good to know how to be with people and a team player yeah, and it not be about just you. And I think it is, it's good to also know exactly who you are and what you're not and all those things. So it's good to have, have, have a, an awareness of both. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever um, fired somebody or not brought somebody on a tour because they were being too much of an individual? Mm-mm. No? You never had to Mm-mm. deal with that? By the time you hired them, they, they were ready to play with the team? Yeah, I mean, I I usually pretty I'm pretty good at being in the room and feeling out the energy right away. You know, one could even say that their energy is more of a determining factor than their dancing. Because oh, energy before talent yeah. always. Because at some level, everybody has around the same range of talent. Like at at a, at a high level. If somebody's a professional dancer, they should be able to pick up most choreography. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't change their essence. Is their essence the right one for the job? Well, if you're on a big job, you want to be with people that you'd like to spend eight hours a day in a room with. Yeah. Spend most of our time working. I mean, it's about the process where you, it's about the process where you figure out whether certain people are worth being a part of the result. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, because if we just focus on the result, it's like at what cost? I think a lot a lot of people, we all want to be a part of a, a, re, a great result. That's just a given. But it's in the process where you find out whether it makes sense for you, for you, I, whoever, to be in the result, in that result, whatever the thing is, you know. Beautiful, man. <laughs> You have a very, a very pleasant, calm energy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's apparent, but it's also infectious. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think when people think of somebody who's successful in Hollywood and mm-hmm. works with celebrities and this, all the stuff that you've done, they don't picture somebody as mm-hmm. centered as your vibration is mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can be really silly. <laughs> Sure, for sure. I'm sure you can have your silly wild times, but the silliest. The few interactions I've had with you, you, you're not like a. You're passionate. You you have your, you're able to be strong, but yeah. you're very centered yeah, yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's helped you, in your career? It like, d- does somebody need to be super extrovert to um, to do all this? I don't know, but for me, it you know the 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 you know the business of show it's. It can be a lot, you know? Yeah. So you've got to, I just, for me, I have to stay like, I like to have patience. I like to be calm, but I also like to be like energetic too. For sure. It depends. But this setting here, we're like, yeah. just talking about just like life in general, you know, <laughs> and how you move and groove through life in the, in the, in the dance world or whatever, you know? What would you like to see improved in the dance world? I remember this one time we were having breakfast and we were talking about the difference between like the royalty payouts in um, Broadway for like choreographers mm. and how on tours, choreographers aren't always cut into the, mm. to that. Are there things like that, subjects like that, that you would like to see improve in the dance industry? I mean, you know, dancer, dancers are, are sometimes, you know, like long ago, it was always like the dancers were the last on the, you know what I mean? 
on to be really like I don't know if you're a dancer you're an artist but you know if you're not they would say poor starving artist or you know what I mean or um I don't know but like it would you know it's we've come a long way right as artists in general right and so it's great to be like an artist and any artist no, no, no matter you're a dancer you're a director you're whatever but it would be great to have that kind of like you know because choreographers on broadway are um they do ha they create a, a a show and they are paid royalties for that show right right so as long as the show keeps making yeah, money yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, i know it's different for you know if it's in theater but but you're like at the beginnings of something that's created that will run for a long time right where if you're in like um i don't know concert tours those tours run for however long the con the the tour runs for right and then there's a it's like a limited engagement you know what i mean right so it's different i know that so i don't know whether that's really comparatively the same right you know and like the broadway they go on tour and tour the world there's a the there's project a, makes more a, money long term there's a first national tour right. of this broadway show it, there's an australian company there's a japan company you know so yeah. the, the, that's like and you're at the beginnings of the creation of the of, intellectual property yeah, of that yeah 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 so it's probably different for you know a choreographer who's creating for a tour for an artist you know mm -hmm. um, but i don't know but it obviously it would be great to have that same kind of yeah you know for any choreographer but maybe we'll get there at some point you know uh, some kind of i don't know i don't i don't have the answer to that but it would be great not the answer but what would be what is the question like what what is something that you would like to see improve in the dance industry not that you have the answer, but um, like something that is there anything you care about that you want to share, like things uh, that like um, you want to see happen or yeah, I'd love to see like um I think yeah, I think I, I would love to see dancers be more um patient in the in the in the in the just in the in the flow of life in dance, I think with their bodies too taking care of their bodies a bit more, you know, cause sometimes it can get like, um, cause you want to like have longevity. You want to dance for a long time. Right. Learn how to properly, carefully, you have one instrument, I think, you know, and have a little bit more patience with yourself in a process. Allow yourself to, to not get it right and allow, your, allow yourself to, fail a little bit for lack of a better word yeah uh, i don't think it's really failing it's actually growing right, don't learning. be afraid to fall on your face in a class or a style that you're not comfortable in or whatever or be more open about be more open for for allowing for things to happen in the room you know what i mean yeah it'll, it'll, it'll create better artists better people just in general, because we are a community, you know. And that could apply to any industry. Anything. Not being afraid, or even if somebody's yeah. a choreographer and they want to go into writing or directing, totally. right? The same concept applies. Totally, not yeah. be afraid to exactly. venture into the unknown and feel like you're not good at something. Exactly. Because we're used to being really good at something or being the best in our little city. You know, like that I, it's like It feels sometimes like, you know, dancers feel like they have to be really good right away. And you're like, oh, really? I was like, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm never very good in the beginning. Right. And that's okay. What um, message would you give to your younger self? Let's say to 17 year old Tice. If you could send a message back in time, what would it be? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I have no idea. It's like, um, you know what? Maybe like, I would have said maybe like, uh, finish finish high school because why I, what why because <laughs> for the fun experience of it well because i was working early so mm. i and i ended up leaving school early to work and be a professional which was great but i would have liked to have graduated
<laughs> and to have like the friendship and the no i had friends there okay. but like i think it would have been great to just oh, just to actually literally finish the high school you finished like 12th grade you know what i mean and anything else any other advice you wish you would have had when you were younger i know it's all a learning process i get it mm -hmm. but i mean just i'm channeling this and hoping that people out there that are watching this that mm -hmm. are at that phase you know the whole interview has been full of insights yeah yeah, yeah. um you know I would say just like, like, maybe don't feel like you have to steer your course so much. Mm. Maybe take your hands off the wheel and just allow. Because I feel like the word allow is very powerful. And I have to remind myself to just allow it to be, you know, just allow it to happen, you know. I mean, as artists, we, we're all in the same thing where it's like we, we give so much and risk it not working out. That's, what, that's kind of what the artist's course is sometimes because we just, we, we, we put it forward. We put our art forward. We invest. We commit to all these great things and it may not work out and, that, and we're fearless that way, which is great. So I love I love that about artists in general. I think it's great because it's like because I'm not focused on what will happen. Yes, it would be great. Yes, I'm going towards this, but I don't have the answers. So instead of like racking my brain to figure out what the answer is, why don't I control what I can, which is me? And if I'm working on developing my art and saying what I want to say, the universe is listening, aren't they? Aren't they? We always talk about it, but we don't really actually believe it. So we have to actually believe that we get lost in our art. We just become that a real artist and put ourselves forward in this great way. And then eventually you're going to line up with what's meant for you if you think that way. But that's just how I think. I'm not saying people should think the way I think. I'm just saying this is what has worked for me. That's beautiful. You know what I mean? I love that word allow. You know what I mean? So it's like... <laughs> I saw this one guy give advice online. He was like, um, I hope your dreams don't work out and you get something better. Exactly. There's only so much you, you can know. control. You, you can have an intention. Know. Yeah, you don't you know. You don't know. You don't know. You just committed and, and yeah, stay open-minded and throw yourself into whatever you love. And I feel like the rest should hopefully take care of itself, you know? And that is kind of the prize itself, right? So. It's like... We've, the whole point of being an artist is so that we don't have to be accountants or whatever else, you know, mm -hmm. on doing yeah, jobs where they're being to an end. Yeah. Artists are supposed to be doing the art is supposed to be the prize. Right. And I have right. some great accountants. They're really good at their job. Right. Do you know what I mean? And they're yeah. spectacular. But like, you know, I was never really very good at math. But <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Right? Like the traditional, so a lot of times traditional job thinking is. I'll do this thing I have to do yeah, yeah, yeah. so I can get to do my fun later. Yeah, Whereas art is, mm. it is the thing. Mm. So also recognize it as that. Because totally. even when I wasn't making much money, I was happy that I was creating. I might have struggled, but mm -hmm. it was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I had fun collaborating with people. Totally. Like that is a gift. I love collaborating. That is a... Yeah, it's, gr it's so great. Because I, yeah. I would love to hear what people, like whoever I'm collaborating with, you know, like we did something together and yeah. it was great. That yeah. you have a joint collective, like, like what do you think? <laughs> you know. Yeah. What I mean? And so, and I always kid in the, when I'm in the re rehearsal room. I'm like, oh my god, I have a really bad idea. Are we ready? <laughs> and I mean, you're gonna be floored because it's so bad. And then I read this. I, I've been saying this for so long, and I was like, and then, oddly enough, the bad ideas actually work out. Yeah. They actually work out. Yeah. And it was because I trusted myself, to not worry about. Not judging it. I was like, wait, I'm going to try it because I, I want to play and I want to explore. Yeah. And then I read Steven Spielberg said, all bad ideas turn into great ideas. And I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. Especially the one like, where you're like, oh, I don't know. Should I try it? It really yeah. made me like trust myself. Okay. So now when I'm in a room, I'm like, okay, this is a really bad idea in my mind. And I was like, let me explore it. Maybe it'll lead me to the next thing, which will then turn into a great idea, which proves my point. Patience. Have some patience. Allow yourself to just try everything as an artist, right? You have to try it and don't feel bad about, 
Like, here's an idea, because I don't have any ideas, because we're all hit that wall at some point. Right. And you're like, okay, how about this? Let's entertain this and just go on the journey with me. And we'll, it will eventually come out the other side with something really nice. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. Yeah. I appreciate it. I feel like this whole conversation is about the power of patience. Yeah. It's good. It's a good thing. I'm really glad we got to connect on this, man. Oh, my God. It's so great. It's so great. This is really cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing space with me. Thanks for having sharing me. Your, your journey and the and, vibe. And really, your dog is like the most magical. <laughs> and like he entered at the perfect time. Like it was a perfect like segue. Right? You know what I mean? He's too dead. So good. Thais, I appreciate you, man. Thanks so much. That's not having so you good. here. So good.